God, here we are again, another cannon fodder. Look, I promise this isn't going to be a trend, a channel dedicated only to cannon fodder articles. Last Light is almost done, and Shadow of Intent will follow soon after. But for now, cannon fodder. Speaking of Shadow of Intent, we open with a brief preview of the upcoming novella. Well, technically two. Our first preview comes from author and Halo veteran himself, Joseph Staten. Starting on November 26th, Mr. Staten was tweeting out brief lines from the novella for seven days until this past Thursday. In today's Cannon Fodder article, we get another, more proper preview. As is often said, it's something best read for oneself. From what is presented, though, there are a few interesting concepts that I can't wait to see further developed. Notable is the new Sanchayum character, Tem Betek, the prelate. Said to be a Sanchayum unlike any other, I am certainly excited to meet him. Also notable is this week's cover image, featuring two characters from the book. The one on the right is clearly the female Sanghili from the novella's cover art. The other remains unknown. Hell, we aren't even sure if it's a Sanghili. While I personally believe it is, many in the community have taken the idea that it might be a Sanchayum, perhaps even the prelate. Time will tell, as Grimm hasn't said, last I checked. Interesting too is that the image is said to be from an upcoming product that we already got a small glimpse of. I'm calling Halo Mythos right now. Next up is a revived Halo video that was lost during Halo Waypoint's update some time ago. Titled The Long Road Home, the video fills in many of the gaps between Halo 2 and 3 for key characters in both titles. This new version features video assets from Halo 2 Anniversary and updated title cards. This was a vital video for lore fans back when it came out, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. Click on the annotation on the screen or check the description box for a link. The final section marks the return of CF Snapshot. Community images of ODSTs and ODST armor were recently collected, and more details on the program can be found on the master thread on Waypoint. Again, link in the description. And that pretty much wraps up the article, though Grimm does note that universe entries marked as updated will now reveal what was updated rather than just having a generic description. Thanks, Grimm. And speaking of universe entries, this week we have the Type 56 Anti-Aerospace Turret or Shrike Turret, the Type 55 Individual Breaching Carapace or Covenant Drop Pod, and an update to the Rocket Launcher article featuring new information on the M57 Pylum Assault Weapon. Starting off with the Shrike Turret, this deadly point defense system is fairly unique among Covenant anti-air platforms. These weapons are fully automated and driven by a semi-feral associated intelligence. Recall, the Covenant had something of an aversion to AI in general, so they rarely used anything too advanced. From what the article describes, the Shrike AI sound like they're from a time before the Covenant or during its early stages, describing the AI themselves as long abandoned and unintelligible to modern Sangheili. Further, the AI must be carefully monitored and locked down before use as they cannot understand modern IFF beacons and code words. Despite these shortcomings, the weapons are very effective and neither the Swords of Sanghelios nor Covenant Remnants could ignore their advantages. Next up are Covenant Drop Pods, specifically more recent variations. Deployed from ships, Drop Pods, individual and squad sized, can be used to quickly deploy troops right into enemy territory. The impact often disorients the enemy, allowing the troop or troops to deploy before said enemy can recover. The article mentions two variants. The first is the T-55 Individual Breaching Carapace, designed for a single occupant, and the other is the T-55 Squad Breaching Carapace, capable of deploying up to four troops. We end today with the updated Rocket Launcher article, featuring the new M57 Pylum. However, as I don't think we've covered the classic M41 here before, it's worth mentioning some of the interesting new info. The M41 Spanker is a classic launcher that everyone knows and loves. In universe though, it was said to be old and outdated well before the start of the Covenant War. The M57 is Halo 5's new launcher, and a design I feel is much more practical. Lighter and sleeker than the M41, the M57 is just as effective in the field. And that does it for today. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a book to review. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.